Okay, so the Eagles Giants game. Have you guys been watching it? Who's been watching it? Well, the Giants, well, Eli Manning looks just like we would think Eli Manning would look, but oh my goodness, Saquon Barkley has had some incredible runs. I mean, like we all knew that kid was going to be good, but man, that kid is really good. Sadly, he's the only thing good happening with the Giants offense right now, and the Eagles are just beating them into the dust at the moment, at least the last I saw. So I just put us on the wrong page. We have got a bunch of memorabilia to open tonight and then a case of Bowen Chrome. So we're going to, of course, start off uh, with our memorabilia. We generally break in the order that things end on eBay. But before we start ripping into boxes and packs, we do have some info to go over. So that's where we are right now. Of course, first up there, a note that my feedback is set to be completely automated on eBay. So what that means to you is that anytime uh, you leave positive feedback for me, you're going to instantly get it in return. And of course, the second part of the message there is to say thank you for bidding and breaking and chatting and hanging out with me. As an aside, we may have some teams available later tonight. I have an absolute monstrous amount of unpaid stuff tonight for some reason in a large variety of uh, categories. So I'll check that out again before we actually start our first break and see what, if anything, is available as we go along through the evening. So just FYI, uh, if you are one of the people and you have one of the unpaid teams that I sent you a message saying, hey, don't forget to pay for this, um, please take a minute and pay for your items so that we can roll on along on time and you can keep your teams. What you're looking at right now is a list of things that are already up and uh, on eBay. This is stuff that we're going to be breaking over the course of the next few days. So tomorrow night uh, will be a half case of Gold Rush autographed baseball jerseys. We'll do a full case of Impeccable Football, which comes out tomorrow. A full case of Archive Signature Series Retired Players. And a full case of, our, our, of Topps Gold Label, I should say, baseball, which also comes out tomorrow. So two new releases on Friday. We're going to break both of those, of course, Friday night. On Saturday, we'll open a couple of boxes of 2013 Top Supreme, a couple of boxes of 2010 plates and patches, another case of gold label baseball, and a half case of heritage high number baseball. On Sunday, note that we're going to start a lot earlier than normal. We'll begin at 9.15 Eastern. It will be a single autographed baseball jersey, a single autographed basketball jersey, and a full 16-box master case of Upper Deck Goodwin Champions. On Monday, we're going to open another half case of Leaf Autograph Mini Football Helmets. That will be the start of a new case. We'll open a full five-box case of TriStar Game Day Greats Autograph Football Jerseys and another case of Impeccable Football. On Tuesday, we'll open a couple of boxes of 2007 Upper Deck Premier, another case of Impeccable, another case of Gold Label, and you got it, another case of Bowman Chrome. So that's what we're looking like for the days ahead. For this evening, there are um, several things to note on this page. The first one, of course, is our free shipping breaks, which is the triple play break, the mini football helmets, and the football jerseys. All the free shipping breaks projected to go out roughly a week from today, Thursday the 18th. The free stuff I always project to go out the door six or seven days after an auction ends. Sometimes I can get it out sooner than that, but plan on that date. And then if you see it go sooner, we'll just know that we're working ahead and life is good. Our paid shipping break tonight, that is Bowman Chrome Baseball. I'm projecting that out the door on Tuesday. Uh, and as always on the paid shipping breaks, if I can get to it sooner than that, I certainly will. And consolation cards. So here's how this works. If your team is not pulled in a break and you don't hit anything at all, not a base card or not the item if you're in the memorabilia breaks, you are entitled to a single consolation used trading card for your team. It can be from any year. It can be from any series. I keep track of the consolation cards that you are due for a rolling 90-day period. Typically what happens if you're in the free shipping break is that uh, the next time you have a package that is heading your way from something that you've hit in a break with me, I'll gather up all those consolation cards that you are due and I will send them at one time with that package. Now, if you don't want to wait for that, you can always send me a message on eBay and let me know and I can put it in a plain white envelope 
drop a stamp on it and head it your way um, with no problem. The paid shipping break tonight, uh, if you're in Bowman Chrome, there's no way you're getting skunked in there. Uh, every every team's going to pull cards out of that. It is a full case break, so everybody should have something coming their way from it. All right, so we're looking first up at 2018 Hit Parade um, Series 8 Triple Play Baseball Box. This is break number 15. We are going to go ahead and go with this one because I don't think I had but maybe a couple of spots that aren't paid on it. So we're just going to let this one ride. It is, uh, again, three autographed items, a baseball, a, a baseball, a baseball jersey, and a photograph. Everything that we're opening tonight ended tonight, Thursday night, the 11th of October. We did have two teams in here that didn't sell. You will see those designated there as no bids slash buyback. That's the Diamondbacks and the Rays. So if anything comes out for one of those teams, it's going to hang out here with me. Otherwise, if it comes out for one of you, well, you know the deal. We just went over the shipping schedule on that. Last but not least, you notice the background went out of focus. Not to worry, that is by design. I don't use uh, autofocus, so that is me manually setting the focus so we'll get a good look at everything. And give me one second here. I am going to go ahead and get my unpaid items page uh, opened up if I can so that I can take a peek at it in a minute. I do know that we had several things that were uh, potentially unpaid in here like quite uh, an unusually high number tonight and I would like to try and get those taken care of if I can and I'm trying to get eBay to cooperate and load and it doesn't seem to want to so bear with me here a second I know whenever we have unpaid bidders this is exactly what happens it always slows our breakdown in multiple ways so guys when you bid on something please please just pay for it or if you're not going to be able to pay for it and you know in advance that you're not going to be able to pay for it because of whatever reason you're you know on a cruise ship or something just let me know in advance so that we can work these things out. And we are almost loaded up here. We're going to see what's, uh, what's up here, if it will ever load for me. All right, so yeah, we do have a couple of unpaid teams in here. But as I said, I'm going to let them ride in this break. We may have some teams to deal with uh, coming up shortly in the jersey and the helmet break. We'll take a, another look at that and revisit that momentarily after we get into our triple play here and take a look and see what comes out of here so who's here tonight ironhead and scott and jay allen's here chris thomas is here um jay allen we got a lot uh we've had maybe a little bit of rain i don't know that it has come from the hurricane necessarily but what we do have is a drastic drop in the temperature it had been in the mid to high 80s which is warm for us for this time of year and now all of a sudden like within 24 hours uh we're down in the 50s and such so it's kind of kind of crazy it has um definitely changed our temperature pretty quickly but i don't know if our rain necessarily has hit yet we may get some of it still yet we'll we'll see how that rolls itself around yeah well scott's right we have had rain on and off in kentucky forever darren you're looking for some dodgers and um oh cali is nice and sunny rub it in there billy come on man <laughs> All right, this is, who is this? I, I am not sure who that is. It's Fanatics Authenticated, though, and uh, uh, unusually, they have also given us a piece of paper. Typically, they do not. They typically only give you the little sticker on the bottom, but I don't know who this is. I can't even tell from the jersey who that is. Does anybody know who this is? Does it tell us on the back? Of course not. That would be way too easy, wouldn't it? Anybody have an idea? I mean, it could be a Cardinal, could be a National, could be, I don't think it's a red, but could be, like, from the uniform. Anybody? Yeah, so I don't know who this is at all. So I'm waiting to see if any of you do. If no one does, I'll have to go to fanatics.com and type in the information and see if I can figure out who that is because I have no idea. 
and I definitely can't uh, read the thing. Mark Grace is our autographed baseball. If we can manage to get Mark Grace out of here, we'll take a look at that. All right, so our Mark Grace baseball. There is your autograph for it. Uh, JSA authenticated, and is that the only authentication we have on there? I guess it is. And there's your JSA card that goes with it. It's a little bent up. It came out of the box that way, but that's all right. It's still in good order there for Mark Grace. Ah, okay, so you guys are saying that that is Frank Howard, and that says Hondo. Oh, okay. See, I didn't even take that as an F. I thought that was a T <laughs> on the start of it. I was like, what does that say? T? I thought it said truck something. There you go. Frank Howard. Okay, so let's do a little... Let's do a little reconnaissance here and uh, take a look and see if I can figure out where this goes. I mean, it's not very often that you see a picture like this where you literally can see nothing about the team at all on the uniform anywhere. And then, of course, they don't bother to tell us uh, either, which is nice on the back. You know, they don't they don't give us any any info. So, I mean, I'm. I don't know. I mean, it could maybe be a national, but I'm just looking at the helmet, but I'm not 100% sure of that either. Can you all make out what's on any of that? So let's see. Frank Howard played for the Dodgers. Well, that's definitely not a Dodgers uniform. Um, he played for the Tigers, which it is not that. He played for um, the Nat... What? The who? For the... Maybe this is the Nationals. Oh, no, that's the Senators, the Washington Senators, which became, who did they become? They became the Rangers, right? The Washington Senators from 71 through, or 65 through 71, I think became, oh, I think they became the Rangers. Because, you know, the Washington Senators came and went several different times in different, um, and they became different teams, depending on the time of frame of it, right? So um, I'll have to go back, and we'll go back and look at that again in a second. Meanwhile, we have an authentic jersey, which is a nice one. It's Dansby Swanson, and there's your little logo man on it. You've got, uh, oh boy, I see we've got, hang on a minute, um, buffering here, even on my side, I think, right now, and I'm trying to figure out what I can do to mitigate that so bear with me for a sec i'm going to try to uh, close a couple things here and see if that will help back or if guys i'm not going to do anything for um because i think we're freezing up and let me see if i can get it fixed here um and why is it giving me that message Okay, I think we're back now. Are we back now, guys? I saw it starting to freeze up on my side, so I just kind of stopped what I was doing. And I, I look like I am back on my side. Can you all confirm someone on your side uh, if you are back or not? It is back. Okay, great. All right, excellent. Thank you, thank you. Somebody said that eBay's been doing this all day, so I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. I was thinking maybe it was something on my side, so I'm thinking, do I need to close something? But then it's like, wait, I'm looking at my performance stats, and they didn't look out of whack. But anyway, we're back now, so that's what matters. Okay, so we have a PSA DNA authenticated MLB, uh, official MLB jersey for Dansby Swanson. So that's a really nice hit. And there's your PSA DNA sticker to go along with it. I always love when we pull the authentic jerseys. There's all your, your tags and uh, nice hit there, of course, for the Braves with the Dansby Swanson. And then we're going to have to go back and revisit here our guy from the Washington Senators. 
Um, I'm pretty sure that that particular version of the Senators from those years became uh, the Rangers, but I need to see how many, uh, I need to make sure of that, because he's definitely not in a Dodgers uniform. I mean, there's absolutely no question that that is not a Dodgers uniform, nor is it a Tigers uniform. So it has to be the Washington Senators uniform. The question is, did they become the Rangers? And the answer is, I think they did. Um, but that's what I've got to try to figure out. So bear with me here for a second, please. And I'm trying to, uh, to, to, uh, find this real quick. And we always pull something that we have to look up, don't we? I mean, isn't that, that just like frustrates the life out of me. I just want to be able to open something and like know what it is and be able to know where it goes and, not have to look all this stuff up. It it really makes me crazy that we pull all this weird stuff that you have to look up. <laughs> I really don't like it at all. Um, okay, so they were the Washington Senators. 1961 to 1971 is the current Texas Rangers. So I think we were uh, on target there because uh, those, are, those match up with the years he played for the Senators. So this is going to go then to the Texas Rangers because that's uh, that matches up with the uniform is definitely a senator. The senator for those years became the current Texas Rangers. And then, of course, our baseball uh, was the Mark Grace autographed baseball. Darren, I don't know who he played longest for. Again, you can tell from the uniform it's not a Detroit Tiger and it's definitely not a Dodger. So there's only one other team that he played for, and that was the Senators. So there's absolutely, you know, there's no way that that is a Dodgers uniform, and there's certainly no way that that is a, that that is a Detroit Lions uniform either. But for, to answer your question, he was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years with the Dodgers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years with what is ultimately the Texas Rangers because there were seven years when they were senators and then there was an eighth year in 1972 after they became the Texas Rangers. So he has eight years with the Rangers, seven years with the Dodgers, but it would have been the Rangers uh, anyway because that clearly wasn't a Dodgers uniform. Yes, Brent, I'm aware there are two different Washington Senators teams. That's what we were talking about a minute ago before I stopped to look it up. And that's why I matched up the years really specifically to make sure that we did get the Washington Senators that became the Rangers. And if you check out those dates, it absolutely does match up to that. So uh, it is definitely a, a Washington Senator that became a, a Texas Ranger. And that is why I hate opening those kinds of things, because you end up spending 15 minutes on something that should have taken us two minutes to open. And by the time we figure out who the guy is and where he played and what year he was and all that, I mean, good grief. They put some of the most interesting things in there sometimes. You kind of just wish if they're going to do that, like put a sticker on it, man. <laughs> like, Tell us what team it is. Save us the research. That would be my... That would be my comment to the hit parade people. So we are looking right now at this little uh, page that tells us about shipping information. I'm going to say that you probably saw this, the majority of you, when I put it up before we did the last break. But if someone didn't see it, please take a minute and review the information there. Uh, I won't bore you with reading through it all again, but it does give you anticipated shipping dates and it does talk about consolation cards, which is what happens if you don't get pulled in a break. So we are right now going into a four box break of 2018 Leaf Autograph Mini Football Helmets. It's a half case break. It's the back half of a case we already started, so that's at least a little faster. And of course, it is the same format that you're accustomed to where we have our team names on one side and our winning bidders are across from it there on the opposite side. So let's see who we can find in our mini helmets tonight. Oh, Scott, you said it's supposed to get down into the 30s tonight? Are you kidding me? Oh, that is crazy. 
crazy, 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 man. I don't uh, need that to be happening right now that we're going to be down in the 30s. That's like, what? The 30s is like, no, we don't go from 80s to 30s. That's there's just something wrong with that whole, whole scenario. Um, all right, this is DeAndre Hopkins. It is leaf authenticated on the back, and we have our leaf credit card uh, authentication there as well. So the Texans are first out with the DeAndre Hopkins. OJ Allen, did I not say Mark Grace? He's a he's a cubby. Mark Grace is a Chicago cubby, I do believe. Oh, somebody says you think he's a diamond dog? Oh, I don't think so. I thought he was a cub. Um, well, then I guess I will have to look that up. I automatically thought Mark Grace was Chicago Cubs. I don't even remember him playing anywhere else. So I guess let's go look that up here for a moment uh, since someone does not agree with me that he's a cub. So hang on one second and I will uh, look that up for you. But I would have, uh, I definitely would have without question said Cubs on that one. I didn't even realize he played for the Diamondbacks. Isn't that something? Sometimes we so strongly associate a player with one team that we just block the other teams out, right? So he played 13 years for the Cubs, and I guess it looks like he did play three years for the Diamondbacks. So there you go. Someone is uh, correct in that he did play for the Diamondbacks, but length of service, of course, going to the Cubbies. Oh, that's a nice one for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Terry Bradshaw, man. Like, you just don't pull those very often. You just really don't. It is Beckett authenticated there on the back. The little box it's in is kind of trying to fall apart on me, but um, I think the important part is the helmet inside. There's your Beckett authentication ticket inside. And a nice Terry Bradshaw coming out for the Steelers which if Toby's still watching is going to put him right over the edge because he, he does not like it when we pull Steelers. Like it makes him crazy. Chris, I would like to find you a Calvin Ridley helmet, Chris. I'm reading back up there for a minute, and uh, I would like to pull a Calvin Ridley helmet for you. We pulled one actually not too long ago. Not too, too long ago. I think it was it a helmet or was it a jersey maybe it was i think it was a helmet warren moon baby a little warren moon on uh an alternate helmet here and it is beckett authenticated looks like we've also got a hologram player sticker authentication on the back there's your beckett coa in the front for anyone who might not know how that works it's kind of the same as what we just looked up uh cards Items, whatever they may be, they always stay with their franchise. So when a franchise renames or relocates, the card or the item just follows the franchise trail. So the former Houston Oilers became the Tennessee Oilers and then the current name, the Tennessee Titans. The Houston Texans are a completely different team, an expansion team that came into play way after the Houston Oilers are long gone. So Oilers items go to the Titans. So the Titans with the nice Warren Moon. Last out, we have the Raiders with Ray Guy. Leaf authenticated on the back and a Leaf uh, COA there inside as well. So to recap our mini helmets, we have the Raiders and Ray Guy. We have the Oilers, which is the current Tennessee Titans, and the nice Warren Moon. And I have to say, that's that's really very nice. I don't see that very often, and I like that a lot. I think that's an excellent hit for the Titans. Then we have DeAndre Hopkins, which is a nice hit for the Texans. DeAndre Hopkins is pretty uh, pretty awesome. And then, of course, you know... Terry Bradshaw for my Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, come on. You don't pull Terry Bradshaw autographed anything very often. But that autographed mini helmet right there is pretty sweet, I have to tell you. So I like that. Oh, hi, Frank from Big Time Breaks. How are you, man? 
hey, don't worry about that. Uh, we'll get it sorted out. Um, I just am hanging on to it for you, and we'll figure it out and see what we... Uh, we'll, we'll get it worked out, so no worries. Toby, you are here. <laughs> you said at least it's a Bradshaw. <laughs> Does that make it better? <laughs> I hope. I know you hate it when we pull Steelers. I always hope that we'll pull something good for you too, Toby, but we have had, we did have something for you not too long ago, but then we haven't had much luck for you in the last week or so anyway, have we? And, um, oh man, Darren, you got outbid on the Titans. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. But it sounds like Michael might have picked him up. And he hit an Earl Campbell in something last night, he said. So, uh, he's in pretty good shape, it sounds like. So, we're heading now into our football jersey. So, this is also a half case break. It's also the back half of the case which is a little bit faster since we don't have to get them out and figure out which ones we're going to open and all that jazz. I imagine you've seen this by now. If you haven't, glance up there, please. Anticipated shipping information, deals, or info about your consolation cards, and all kinds of other, all kinds of other interesting info. We are coming into four boxes of 2018 Leaf Autograph Football Jerseys Half Case Break. It is break number 22. We have teams on the left. Winning bidders are across from it there on the right-hand side. And, of course, uh, our next jersey break, for those of you who are into the jerseys, is going to be a full case of the TriStar Game Day Greats. So I think I'm down to my last case of the Leaf jerseys. So probably for the rest of those, we'll either go back to breaking them one or maybe two at a time, but we probably won't do any more half cases of leaf unless I suddenly find a case of them that I don't think I have. I think we're down to just one case after this one. Christian McCaffrey, little autographed jersey for the Panthers. Leaf authenticated hologram sticker and a leaf COA. If one of these jerseys comes your way, please make sure that you find whatever paper or credit card plastic type authentication is in there because I'm usually going to fold it up inside the jersey. And it's probably going to roll around during shipping and then you're going to get it and be all excited and take it out and flip it open, which is exactly what I would do. And then that little thing's going to go flying and we may never see it again. So I always say, look for it before you start tossing stuff around. Or away. Before you start, <laughs> start tossing things away. Johnny Manziel. Well, well, well. So there's your, um, your Johnny Manziel autograph. It is Leaf Authenticated and uh, Leaf Credit Card Size uh, COA there as well. And, of course, uh, Johnny Football only played w uh, for one team in the NFL. That would be the Browns. So that's where that's headed. I know he's up in the Canadian Football League right now, but, you know, that doesn't help us. We're dealing only with the NFL. So that's going to, uh, to the Browns. Scott, you got a numbered Barry Sanders jersey the other day. That's pretty cool, man. And Michael, you said uh, you've had a couple of hits in the helmet break. Oh, the Earl Campbell and the Derrick Henry. That's very nice. Okay, we have Ronnie Lott. That is 49ers, right? There is a Beckett COA. There's your signature, your Beckett authentication sticker on there. And it is Ronnie Lott for the 49ers. I think it must be in a bag inside the bag because, I don't know, something about it looks kind of unusual. I think it's in plastic wrap or plastic something inside the plastic bag as well. So <laughs> you got double, double the protection on that one, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Johnny Menzel in here. That's like, I don't know why. That, that's kind of crazy that that's in here. But there you go. 
that's interesting to say the least last one out let's see what we have here it's Derrick Henry speaking of the Titans and I think someone was just speaking about Derrick Henry in particular a minute ago so there's your leaf uh, authentication there is your signature for Derrick Henry your leaf authenticated hologram and another like player hologram and we know of course that this is Derrick Henry because very handily they tell us on the bag who the players are <laughs> Unlike Hit Parade, who gives us players from, you know, back in before we're born with <laughs> no identifying information so we can track it down over the course of 20 minutes. But, but Leaf, they don't do that to you. Leaf tells you who somebody is. So to recap, we have Derrick Henry and the Titans. We have the Ronnie Lott for the 49ers. The Johnny Manziel, you know, whatever, ghost of football quarterbacks past or whatever, uh, for the Browns. And then for the Panthers, we had Christian McCaffrey. So there you go. That's our half case of jerseys. Give me a minute to get these put out of the way so that I don't have them, um, you know, kind of in the line of fire. And then we'll get started on Bowman Chrome. But give me just a minute here to get these squared away. All righty, now I've got room to make a new mess with all the stuff I throw on the floor from, <laughs> from Bowman Chrome. <laughs> Gina, you said you had all the Canadian teams in the break. <laughs> yeah, very funny. <laughs> very, very funny. Yeah, guys, I don't know. They prop, you know, Johnny football was making noises about making it a comeback and getting back into the NFL. And of course, you know, he was wearing all of his shirts that said comeback season and working out at all the pro days. And, you know, this product came out, what, two, three months ago at this point, maybe farther back than that. And, of course, I'm sure they put it together a couple of months prior to that. They probably thought that he'd end up on an NFL team somewhere. But they'd be wrong. All right, so that completed our free shipping breaks for tonight. Once again, anticipating those to get out the door on or about... Thursday the 18th, a week from today. Sometimes I can get them out faster and, of course, uh, just be pleasantly surprised if they do go to you faster than that. Our paid shipping break tonight, we're getting ready to embark upon Bowman Chrome. And it will be probably out the door on Wednesday, maybe sooner, but again, plan on Tuesday. And if I can get it out to you faster than that, I will. As far as consolation cards go, if you're on one of the free shipping breaks... Generally speaking, that's going to be held until the next time you have a package going, unless you send me a message and ask me to do it differently, in which case I'll be happy to. So if that's, uh, if that's your jam, you just send me a message and let me know, okay? So 12 boxes of 2018 Bowman Chrome Baseball. This is break number six. So this is our sixth case of Bowman Chrome, and we've got it down to an art form now, I think. And, of course, it is, uh, again, ended tonight on eBay Thursday night, the 11th of October. You've got your team names there on the left. The winning bidders are across from it on the right-hand side. And we are going to be um, looking for some big hits in here. But you know what? Let me check something. I had some unpaid teams in this. Let me see where we are with that um, and see if I need to, to do anything in regard to that. So it looks like right now um, I've got one unpaid team. And let me see. Uh, I've still got a uh, couple of weird things going on, but I think we have figured out there was some kind of eBay, PayPal, or something going on tonight, and it was causing some people's payments to process oddly. So it looks like I do have one unpaid team, but it is a low dollar amount. And honestly, I don't really feel like fooling with it. So uh, we're just going to let it ride and hope that person eventually pays for it.
Yeah, it is actually, uh, you know, some nights I'm just not in the mood to fool with all that. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is like one of those nights after we had to look up everything in the triple play box. <laughs> everything but the Dansby Swanson. I'm just like, no, no thank you. I don't want to... I don't want to uh, deal with that tonight. So there you go. And it was only like a 12, it was only like $14 team or something. So if that one doesn't pay me, it won't be the end of the world, I guess. And what did you guys say about <laughs> Jay Allen? You said Johnny Football will sign for $5. <laughs> he does sign a lot, doesn't he? I don't know if he still signs as much now that he's up in Canada, but he certainly um, was doing a lot of signing when he was down here. It seems like he was always at some kind of event <laughs> signing something. Um, Brent, I don't know who had the Panthers in the jersey break. Are you guys, um, are you looking to buy that jersey? Is that what you're saying, Brent? If you are... I can just kind of generally make an announcement here and say, hey, if you had the Christian McCaffrey jersey tonight for the Panthers that somebody's interested in buying it, and you can jump into chat and let us know if you're interested in selling it. Otherwise, you can message me later if you're watching it on replay, and I could always uh, try and hook you up if I can remember who it was that wanted it. Hi, Martin. How are you? Scott, you're rubbing it in that he beat the Steelers in a playoff game. Come on, man. <laughs> who, comes, who comes in and does that? That's just mean. <laughs> that is just so mean. Ironhead is looking for some brewers. And Latchman is here. Geo is here. Hi, Geo. And, um... Jay Allen said it's probably the team you were outbid on. <laughs> oh, you think you had the Panthers. Oh, well, that's a whole other story, Brent. Well, hold on. Hold on then there for a minute and let me... Uh, I can't put you... I can't put the spreadsheet back because I have stuff already open out on the table, but I can go look for you. Um, it says that the jersey break tonight with the Panthers went to Heels Fan 3450 MBS. That is what I show on my spreadsheet. So unless I made a weird uh, copy and paste error, I would assume that that is correct. I don't know if that's you or not, though, Brent. I am not very good at remembering who's... Screen name on YouTube matches up with what username on eBay matches up with what real name is in real life. Sometimes I get those all turned around in my head. So, All right. In each of our master boxes, as you saw, we have two mini boxes that come out. In each of our mini boxes, we will find an autograph. So there are, of course, 12 master boxes, meaning 24 minis, meaning 24 autographs uh, that we should find here in this break. Along the way, we're going to find uh, some numbered cards. We'll find a, a fair amount of inserts. The first time that we see each insert type, I'll make a point of noting it and drawing your attention to it. Then you'll kind of know going forward what those are about when you see them go through. And what else? I mean, I think that's kind of the most of Bowman Chrome. That's that's the main info. But if I can think of anything uh, else in here, then we'll we'll talk about it as we get to it. How about that? So Arizona Fall League, we'll find that insert quite a bit, and it will always be a refractor when we find it. Here's a purple shimmer, Lewis Ortiz to 655 for the Brewers. Anytime you see a purple shimmer, it's going to be to 655. When we find straight up purple that it does not have the shimmer, of course, that's numbered a little differently. Peaks of potential, we're going to find loads of those. They are also all going to refract the entire insert series does. This is a Todd Frazier refractor, and our base refractors like that are going to be numbered to 499, those that do not have color. Here's our purple color that doesn't have the shimmer, and it is numbered to 250. 
Oh, you hit a jersey on another site too, Brent? Like simultaneously? You need to go out and play the lottery then, man, because that's, <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good mojo working your way, I have to say. And here we have Medina on a first Bowman for the New York Yankees as our first autograph making its appearance this evening in Bowman Chrome. We, I love my Bowman Chrome. We do still have, oh, a handful more cases of it as well that we'll work our way through. Royce Lewis, this is a Bowman Sterling continuity card, and we should find one of these per Master Box. And, of course, the Bowman Sterling, yeah, they call, you know, the reason they call them continuity is we those tend to show up every year as one of the inserts. It's always a Bowman Sterling uh, parallel in Bowman Chrome. Here's Gohara. That is numbered to 250. And it's for the Braves. I tell you what I'm kind of really excited about is Impeccable tomorrow. I'm, I'm still, you know, feeling the love from Impeccable Basketball that we just opened. I, I still have that to keep me warm and cozy for the moment. But... Um, I just like Impeccable as a brand a lot, so I'm super jazzed that football is coming tomorrow. This is a first Bowman for the Minnesota Twins. It's numbered to 250, and I'm going to go with Greaterall is maybe possibly not at all how you say his name, but <laughs> that's my story, and I am sticking to it. So there you go. <laughs> I guess we'll be getting back to baseball pretty soon. So now that we've had some elimination games, who's everybody's choice to win the World Series? Now that we're a little closer to knowing who's headed in that direction, I'm thinking the Astros are gonna are gonna be the repeat champs. I don't know. The Astros look pretty good. But then again, the Red Sox looked, well, I don't know. The Red Sox looked good at times and then not as good at times. So, I don't know. I, I, I yeah, of course. Then again, you've got the Brewers who have been just on fire. Could go any way, really, I guess, at this point still. Oh, Ironhead says it is going to be the Brewers. He's definitely feeling, feeling the Brewers happening. You know, I wouldn't mind at all for the Brewers to win. I kind of like when some of the... I call them a small market team. I guess they're really not. Milwaukee's a pretty good-sized city, but I think of them as more of a small market team like you think of Cincinnati and Cleveland and that type thing. So I don't ever mind seeing those guys win. Martin's still sticking with Boston. So the, the uh, playoffs didn't change his opinion at all. He's still feeling Red Sox. Oh, Ironhead, you went to three uh, Brewers games this year. Well, fun, man. I haven't been to a live game in forever. I was thinking about that this year that I needed to drive up to Cincinnati. I hadn't been up in so long. And then I reminded myself, oh, yeah, we've stunk up the place since 2013 that's why I, that's why i haven't been to a live game in forever yeah yeah i remember now <laughs> so then i just decided yeah maybe we'll maybe we'll just wait a little bit longer we'll wait and see if things turn around this is lolo sanchez it is a purple shimmer to 655 for the pittsburgh pirates yeah, it's just hard to justify, right? Getting in the car, driving up there, all the money you spend on admission and, you know, snacks and souvenirs and whatever. And then you got to drive all the way back and you're out there in the blazing sun to watch somebody's butt get whipped by 15 runs. <laughs> Maybe not the best way to spend the day. To 4.99 Tyler O'Neill refractor for the Cardinals. And behind that is Aramis Aidman. To 250. That is purple parallel for the Cubbies. I put him in upside down though, didn't I? Why'd I do that? So I don't know. We haven't we haven't made the trek to Cincinnati in a while. But I guess the other part of it is almost everything, almost every game is televised now, so it's so easy to sit on your butt and watch it on the big screen TV in your house, right? 
Chris Torres first Bowman Miami Marlins but I think that's true of a lot of sporting events I mean sure it's definitely the atmosphere is what makes it fun if your team is winning you know the atmosphere is great being there with other fans like-minded fans and that sort of thing but when your team is kind of mediocre or losing it is so much easier to sit and watch it at home. <laughs> For sure. And parking. I always hate the parking, too. Oh, Martin says, a beer and nachos these days, 28 bucks. Tag on. Dylan Tate, that's a green shimmer to 99 for the Yankees. 28 bucks these? Oh, man. Like, okay, yeah, it definitely has been a few years since I've been there live. Probably at least, oh, it's probably been at least six or seven years since we've been to a live game. And it's been at least six or seven years since the Reds were any good. So there you go. There's the correlation. <laughs> the Phillies, that is uh, Mickey coming out to 150 in a blue parallel. And we have Cole Freeman coming out for the Washington Nationals. That's on a first Bowman. And you know what? I think we have five-star baseball next week. Is that right? I think we do. So gold label is tomorrow, of course. But I am pretty sure that we have five-star baseball on Wednesday. And we have Phoenix football on Wednesday. And I maybe immaculate basketball maybe Wednesday as well. I don't know. It's a bunch of stuff coming up next week. But as we all know, there's going to be a bunch of stuff all the way through the end of the year because they like to just overload us and, you know, just release 80 products at a time. That's what it feels like anyway. <laughs> they really get carried away towards the end of the year, it seems. Especially with basketball. Because you go through such big, long stretches after the season ends and after the draft concludes, there's a big gap of many months before the new season starts. And you would think that in that big gap, they could finish up all the 2017-18 stuff, maybe get a little early jump start on the 18-19 stuff, but they never do. I mean, we won't even be finished with 1718 until Flawless hits. And I don't think Flawless hits until the 31st of this month or thereabouts. And then they'll give you maybe four or five days <laughs> or a week if you're lucky. And then they start drilling you with the 2018-19 basketball as fast as they can pump it out through the end of the year. Like, do they not really understand the concept of spacing? Uh, apparently they don't. But I wish that they did because it's a lot to break. It's a lot to buy into for you guys. It's a lot to break and sort and get out the door on my side. It's, I just think if they would space it better, it'd be better for everyone. Garcia, first Bowman, Purple Shimmer Nationals. But I guess, you know what, they've done it like this so long. I don't think they're going to be changing it anytime soon. There is a blue parallel Haria for the Milwaukee Brewers. The potentially World Series bound Brewers. We don't know yet. De Los Santos for the Phillies. First Bowman autograph. And I feel like we're kind of due for a big hit in Bowman Chrome. Because, you know, we've had a lot of nice hits in here. But I feel like we're due for, like, a big, booming kind of wow hit, don't you? It seems to me like we should be. This is Victor Robley's Bowman Sterling continuity for the Nationals. Which reminds me, did we get one in that other box? I don't think we did. So maybe it's not out of every Master box. Maybe it's every other I don't think we got one out of the last one that I remember. Corey Seager, green parallel to 99 for the Dodgers. 
Oh, hang on now. Alex Verdugo tried to jump ship on me there. Tried to go wandering off. Ooh, 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 who do we have? Okay, it's... <laughs> I always get excited when I see an autograph on the inserts. So this is for the D-backs, and it is TJ... How do you say his last name, guys? Zooch? Zooch, maybe? I'm not sure. It's to 150. It's one of the few places in Bowman where you will find the autograph on a sticker instead of the card itself. And that's what they always do when you run into an autograph on an insert like this one. Or, of course, uh, they do that as well when you have um, an autographed relic. The, the autograph is generally on a sticker when they pair it with a relic. So, so that's how that works. But it's still worth it to get it on the insert. I always like those. Yeah, that was Blue Jays. Sorry. We had a diamond. Didn't we have a diamond back a minute ago? I think we did, but this is actually Blue Jays. Um, did I say Diamondbacks? Gosh, I hope I didn't, but um, I probably did. It's Arizona Fall League, and I probably said Arizona Diamondbacks instead of Arizona Fall League, didn't I? I probably did. Well, it's Arizona Fall League insert, or an Arizona insert, however I said it. The team is the Blue Jays, and it's T.J. Zucker, Zeicher, whatever, however you say his name, to 150. So, yes, guys, apologies. I might have said Arizona Fall League. I might have just said Arizona insert. I could have even said an Arizona Diamondbacks insert, thinking Arizona Fall League, but it's definitely the card is for the Blue Jays. And sorry if I got uh, off track there. I get, like I said, I get a little, I get a little hyper when I get a little excited when I see <laughs> something unusual come out, like an autograph on an insert or the autograph on a relic or something that's outside the norm of what we see in Bowman Chrome. Oh, Martin said I said Arizona Diamondbacks insert. Good grief. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for catching that for me. Arizona Fall League insert, not Diamondbacks insert for the Blue Jays, of course. Oh, well, I made a mess of that pack, too. Come on out of there, cards. My gracious. So, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Occasionally, I think one thing and I say something completely different. But it's always going to go to the card, the correct team that you see on the card, even when I do something stupid and say Arizona Diamondbacks insert instead of Arizona Fall League insert. Ironhead, you said it's rare to see a Brewer's autograph in Bowman. I hadn't really noticed that too much. But I guess that, uh, well, I mean, as, as with anything, it depends on on your farm system, you know, and I see a little orange, and uh, so it just depends on how how good a shape your farm system is in. Usually, will dictate, of course, how how much you find of your team in Bowman. That is, of course, number to twenty five. It's Dakota Hudson, and it is an orange shimmer for the St. Louis Cardinals. And that time I did manage to get the right team name said. <laughs> oh, Martin, that was your team. So it was your team I was messing up. So no wonder you no wonder you saw that. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm always, always, guys, feel free to point out if I do something boneheaded like that because sometimes I, I do get sidetracked. How about this? A nice little red Joey Lucchese for the Padres numbered to five. Number four of five. We have not found a lot of red in Bowman Chrome, so I'm pretty uh, happy to see that come out, especially on the heels of the nice orange that we had before it. De Los Santos, a little purple, first Bowman to 250. Yeah, Ironhead, I was saying that the that the insert, I'm calling the Arizona Fall League as an insert. So 
that's that's what I was making reference to. When I say on an insert, that's what I mean. Like the Arizona Fall League, or if it had come out on Peaks of Potential, or if it came out on Bowman Sterling. Um, that's what I meant when I said that it would have, be a sticker auto if it came out on an insert. Well, now this is a nice hit. If you've got the Angels, here's Kevin Maytan. And, of course, we all know how Kevin Maytan uh, found his way to the Angels. But that is a nice hit indeed. Kid's supposed to be really good. So, Angels with a nice hit there. Oh, all of your brewers, you're saying all of your brewers hits are on inserts. I misunderstood what you were what you were saying. I thought you were asking me what the inserts were that could have autographs on them. I did not get that. Apparently, I did not eat my Wheaties today or something because my brain is <laughs> stuck in neutral at the moment, it would seem. That is Ramos for the San Francisco Giants on a Bowman Sterling continuity. But actually, I'll tell you what really happened is this. My dad, my dad is in his 80s. He could have retired years ago. Well, he did. He retired from IBM, oh, 20 plus years ago. But he just gets bored. He likes to do stuff. He likes to work to this day. He would just go crazy if he sat home. Jose Ramirez, that's the Indians to 250 on a purple parallel. So he has this little... Uh, job that he does and he drives around between all these different local banks insert our um, redemption we're gonna leave it face down we'll flip it at the end of the break and so he starts really early in the morning because he's an early early riser he's early to bed early to rise kind of guy and he loves mornings I'm the opposite but anyway so he starts this job like really early every day and he runs his little route going between all these banks picking up whatever he picks up their you know mail that goes back to the main branch and deposit slips and stuff like that so he had some he wanted to pick up the uk basketball tickets from me today and he said, well, can we meet in the afternoon when I'm on such and such part of town? And I said, no, I'm waiting on, you know, UPS and FedEx. Can't do that. So his only other time was like so early. He said, you know, well, I can meet you a little bit before eight. And I'm thinking, oh, man, like I'm not even going to be in bed probably until three. But okay. So I dutifully set my alarm. I get up. I get ready. I'm like waiting for him to call me to tell me that he's exactly what time he's going to be there. And he doesn't call me and he doesn't call me. And so finally I call him and I'm like, Dad, what, what's up, man? <laughs> like, what, aren't we supposed to be meeting like right now? He goes, oh, I told you the wrong time. I'm sorry. I won't be in that part of town for another hour. I was like, what? <laughs> So that is actually why my brain is in neutral, is because I did not go to sleep until about 3 a.m. and I got up a little after 7 a.m. because I thought I had to meet my dad at 8 a.m. when really I didn't have to meet him till 9. So lack of sleep is the moral of the story. Martin, you said that you heard Kevin Maytan is lazy and putting on weight and that he has bad baseball ethics. Wow, okay. <laughs> well, I had not heard that. Um, so what do you mean by bad baseball ethics? You have to expound upon that a little bit, Martin. So we know, uh, we know exactly, or so I know rather, exactly what you're saying to me there. For the A's, that is a purple shimmer Logan short. So I wasn't aware that Kevin Maytan is, I guess, uh, as Martin is telling us, maybe not quite as highly regarded now that he's moved over to the Angels organization. He's maybe slacking off, according to Martin. That is Dylan Tate to 499 on a refractor for the Yankees. And we have an autograph for the Mets, and it is Luis Guillermo, or Guillerme, one of the two, something, or maybe neither of the two, but it is for the Mets. <laughs> and it's some approximation of that last name, anyway, maybe, I hope. 
we're going to call it that anyway. So I wonder why they put the brewers. I'm back to I'm back to Ironhead's thing now. I wonder why they only put brewers autographs on inserts this year. That seems an odd choice to make for Bowman. Mike Trout, Bowman Sterling continuity for the Angels. Oh, so you're saying he's just not, like, interested in the game at this point, huh, Maytan? He's just kind of hanging out saying, hey, I'm collecting a check. Well, that is not cool because the kid's got a lot of talent. Michael Fulmer, gold parallel, Detroit Tigers to 50. So if he just wastes all that because he decided he got paid, that's kind of unfortunate. Yankees. Oh, Yankees. There's one of your good rookies. It happens to be my favorite of your rookies this year. I think it's probably your favorite of your rookies, too. I started out liking Torres a lot. And, of course, as the season went along, didn't we all just come to love Miguel Andujar? That is numbered to 499. It's a refractor and autographed for the New York Yankees who are happy, they can sit back and relax and enjoy the rest of the break now. And remember, we do have a redemption there that came out as well. We'll flip that over at the end of the break, along with any others that we might find between now and then. It just kind of hangs out there in our little housekeeping area, is what I call it. And, of course, tomorrow we've got Gold Label Baseball. And, you know, I like Gold Label. I love the framed autographs. But I've always found all the levels to be, like, very time-consuming if you're trying to figure out, not obviously to, when we're breaking it, but, like, if you're trying to figure out what it's worth when you're selling it. Because it's not, at least in the past, it hasn't just been... Class 1, Class 2, and Class 3, which you can usually sort of figure out based on the image. You know, whether they're playing defense or offense or what they're doing in the picture, you can usually tell. And it has it on there in little tiny writing as well. But So, of course, Class 1, Class 2, Class 3, but then you get into all the different colors, like Class 3 red, Class 3 blue. And I'm like, really? Do we need that many parallels? So it can take a while if you're trying to figure out and you want to sell it, if you want to sell what you hit, that can take a while. But of course, some of those class threes can uh, definitely be worth a little money even without an autograph on them. You said you're in an Angels group. They have people that watch them play and say he'll be a good trade bargain because he's not as dedicated Oh, and it's coming from a reliable source. Okay, well, 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 well. So it sounds like Kevin Maytan might be on the move again, huh? Of course, the last time he was on the move, that wasn't really his fault. <laughs> that would be thanks to the Band for Life uh, baseball folks uh, who managed to violate the international rules. That is numbered to 99. It is Diaz for the Marlins with a green shimmer. I think I see some cracked ice possibly glowing here in the background on something in the way back. Burroughs, Detroit Tigers to 499. That is uh, a refractor as well. Um, you know what? I think that's a short print. Is that a short print? I think it is for Scott Kingery. Let me hold one moment, please. Yeah, it does have a different code number. I don't. I just don't remember seeing that image before. And not that I necessarily burn every image into my brain, because I don't. But when I'm flipping through, sometimes if one just seems out of the ordinary, I stop on it. I think that might be a short print Scott Kingery for the Phillies. Logan Shore for the A's. I would not absolutely guarantee it. I would have to look it up to tell you 100% for sure, but I think it's a decent possibility. Ooh, and our crack, it's not called cracked ice, sorry. That's what Panini calls it. 
Our atomic in here is Akuna. Yeah, baby. Coming out for the Atlanta Braves. It is numbered to 150 on an Arizona Fall League. Not an Arizona Diamondbacks, but an Arizona Fall League insert. Got it right that time with the atomic to 150. And of course, you can tell I've been opening a lot of Panini stuff like Contenders uh, Baseball recently because I was just right there going right for cracked ice and thinking numbered to 23. And then you've got a, no, whoops, reset. Atomic and a little higher numbered, but still a nice hit. Adam Hazley, Philadelphia Phillies, Bowman Sterling continuity card. And a, wait a minute, wait a minute. Somebody stuck to the back of Austin Riley, I think. Yeah, for the Diamondbacks. The Texas Rangers, it's Willie Calhoun, 150 blue parallel. So I wonder where they're going to trade Maytan. Or who's in the market for that? You know what? Knowing my luck, it'll probably be Cincinnati Reds that get him. <laughs> the Reds won't do their due diligence. And they'll think they're getting a great prospect and they'll trade away like Joey Votto or somebody really good. Maybe we won't trade away Joey Votto, but you you take my point. Dustin May to 499 that's the Dodgers and it's a refractor. My point is they'll trade away somebody good for us. Hunter Green or somebody, Nick Senzel or something. And then we'll get this kid who will just like sit on the bench and eat $28 nachos or whatever. <laughs> so... <laughs> that would be about my luck. So I'm just going to say, don't come to the Reds. Whatever you do, Kevin Maytan, if you're a big lump of coal and you're not going to play or be good, then don't, don't come to Cincinnati. Speaking of trades, this is a different sport. But for those of you who follow basketball as well, some of you I know do, and maybe not all of you, but what in the world with Jimmy Butler? OMG, come on. I mean, the guy wants to be traded, fair enough. But did you see, I mean, he came into practice, whoops, he came into practice talking smack to everybody, all the other players, the GM, like everybody, he was just... Horrible, I guess, trying to force the trade. I don't know. And I'm just thinking, ma'am, what is wrong with these grown men who are being paid millions upon millions, tens of millions of dollars to play the sport? And then they come in and behave like they're five-year-olds on playground. And I'm just like, come on, man, Jimmy Butler, what are you doing? So I, but it doesn't look, now it seems like they may not even end up trading him, which is just crazy. Because after he throws his tirade at the practice and like takes the third stringers and, and beats the, the nucleus of the team with Jimmy Butler and the third stringers, which just inflamed it even more, I think. Then he calls some kind of meeting where he wants to clear the air and blah, 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 like he's acting like he's going to stay. I'm like, no, man, at this point, he just needs to go. I mean, you're up in your GM's face saying you wouldn't be blank without me. And you're up in your other players' faces, including the star of the team, Carl Anthony Towns, who just signed the huge, like, $150 million extension or some crazy amount of money like that. And here you are, Jimmy Butler, telling him he's not S. And, you know, that is a Royce... Lewis, Minnesota Twins, Bowman, Sterling, continuity. Just the whole behavior was just, like, I, I I don't respect that. I mean, I respect the guy going in and saying, I don't want to play here. I want to be traded. And all that, that's fine. But the way he behaved at practice was just un inexcusable. Kevin Kermayer, that is to 250. It is a purple parallel for the Tampa Bay Rays. Hey, hey, we have a little Deets. 
It's a green parallel numbered to 99, first Bowman Baltimore Orioles. But I honestly just don't get some of these guys. How do you make the kind of money that some of these players make and act the way that you act? I think that might be a short print too. Um, I wanted to get another, I got another look at it and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's also a short print to go along with the Kingery that we saw a minute ago. I think that Devers is as well. Yeah, you're right, Martin. I mean, it is exactly like a kid throwing a tantrum. There's just, I, I mean, I do, I understand the frustration with it, but not, you know, maybe having to play somewhere you don't want to play, but, oh, I have been hoping we would hit this. I wanted it to be autographed, but I'm so <laughs> excited that we hit it. It's Russell Wilson, right? Okay, so yes, the quarterback for uh, in the NFL for the Seahawks, that Russell Wilson also has a little deal with the New York Yankees, and he showed up at spring training this year. So he's got a, his, his or, not only do we pull him, he's on an orange shimmer to 25. If that had been autographed, I probably would have lost my mind. But I'm still pretty excited that we pulled that right now. I'm, I'm, I've been wanting to pull Russell Wilson. Like so badly wanting to pull Russell Wilson. So the fact that we got on the orange shimmer no less really just kind of makes my night. For the Tigers, it's Daz Cameron to 499. It is a uh, refractor coming out for the Tigers. So really, the Yankees, you're kind of doing all right right now because there's another Medina first Bowman. You've got a bookend of those, I believe. You have the Andujar, and then you've just got the uh, Orange Shimmer Russell Wilson, which I got to think is probably worth a little money. So, Yankees, you're, you're having yourselves a good break right now. I very badly want to get a, a peek at that redemption because I have a feeling maybe our redemption is going to be good. So, I mean, I did say that we were due for a big hit. Or I felt like we were due for a big hit. But I really did not get a peek at it, so I don't know if it's going to be or not. We'll probably turn it over and it'll be something totally boring, but I hope not. I hope we're going to turn it over and it's going to be... Fire. So many of you know I've been working, well, I haven't been working on, I've been talking about getting a website up and not finding time to work on it and trying to get somebody hired to do it. So one of my friends very generously offered last week to spearhead the effort to find and hire developers. So, assuming that she follows through with that, and I think she will because she's pretty organized, um, we might be making some progress on that before too long, which would be pretty cool. Because then we could do all kinds of other interesting things. So, we'll see how it goes. I'd love to have it up by the first of the year, though. That would be pretty nice. I also have a logo that's been done, and I've never even gotten that loaded up to YouTube or anything. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll get her started on that task, too. I, I need to just pay her and say, here you go. I'll pay you to project manage all of this stuff. This is for the A's. It is a purple shimmer to 655. It is Sheldon Noose, maybe. Noose or Noose. Uh, Verdugo might also possibly, maybe, I don't know if that's a short print or not, maybe. It may just be that all the rookies are in there, um, with lesser quantity, obviously, than the prospects. Ortiz, that's numbered to 499 for the Milwaukee Brewers. It's a refractor. And so the rookies might be that they're just not technically short prints, but maybe just not uh, as frequent to come out as our prospects. My Cincinnati Reds have a hit. It's Gavin LaValle. So 
so we are we have four boxes left after we finish the one that's in my hand or at least four master boxes so that's eight mini boxes mike trout bowman sterling continuity for the angels oh i'm so sorry that went right out of my hands and uh, that is a brewer peaks of potential for corbin burns but he doesn't seem to be any worse for the wear. He didn't go far. He stayed on the mat, and uh, he seems to be no worse for the wear, but obviously don't want him wandering around on me. Says every woman everywhere. Freddie Freeman to 499 for the Braves. That is a refractor. Washington Nationals and Tuna. That's to 150, and it is the blue parallel. Our hit is the Boston Red Sox, and it is Antoni Flores. That is to 150. It is a first Bowman Blue Parallel. Ironhead says, oh, it's okay because it didn't have any ink on it. <laughs> yes, well, fortunately, but yeah, I always hate that. I mean, every once in a while, one does just kind of jump right out of the pile or jump right out of my hand and... Thank goodness I don't, they're not ever very held up very high. And with mats, it's rare that anything would happen to it. But every once in a while, you know, one will get a little dinged up. But that's why I always like to look at them after it happens to make sure that if there's anything there that we can see it and account for it. And I can take care of it if I need to. But fortunately... As you say, that time we came out okay. Oh, tonight it's really just killing me not to flip that redemption. You know, most of the time it doesn't bother me. They could set up there and stack up, and that stack can get as high as it wants to get, and I'm perfectly okay with waiting till the end of the break to flip it over and see who it is. But for some reason tonight, that redemption is kind of like burning a hole in my pocket. Like I want to I want to see who it is so badly. But I'm not. I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold out and wait. But I really do want to know. Maybe it'll be a Russell Wilson autograph parallel. To go with our Russell Wilson orange shimmer that we found a while ago. You never know. Stranger things. Ramos, San Francisco Giants. But you know, I also don't think we've pulled an Otani autograph out of here yet, have we, guys? Out of Chrome, I mean. Obviously, we pulled the big, monstrous one out of regular Bowman. But out of Chrome... I don't think we have. We've pulled him out of virtually everything else we've opened, but I don't think out of Chrome, maybe. The Nationals, Andrew Stevenson, blue parallel to 150. The Diamondbacks with Eduardo Diaz on a first Bowman. And then Byron Buxton. You know, like, what is happening with Byron Buxton? Because the Twins, didn't they send him back down to the minors again? Like, what are the Twins doing to Byron Buxton? I don't get that move, and I'm not a fan of that move either. So, what they're doing. For the Cubbies, we have David Bodie. That is numbered to 150, and it is an atomic refractor on our Arizona Fall League insert. Bowman Sterling Continuity is Glaber Torres for the New York Yankees. Which, you know what? The Yankees... Aaron Boone, I think, made some questionable decisions in their playoff run. But this is two years in a row that, frankly, the Yankees should have gotten farther than they did. Like, what is going on over there? They've got plenty of talent, and they somehow 
manage to fall apart when they get to the playoffs, and I don't know why. Padres to 99, Lucchese. There's another Russell Wilson, a base one. Here comes Dietz again, but this one is a first Bowman refractor. It's numbered to 499, Orioles. But I definitely think, you know, I used to not really think that when your manager was a rookie, I used to think, eh, it really doesn't make that much difference if the manager's a rookie. Because, I mean, it's the guys on the field that win the game or lose the game. And to a certain extent, I still feel that way. Yet, having watched some of the decisions Aaron Boone made, in particular, leaving people on the mound way longer than they should have been left there, um, I have come to realize that, in fact, yes, rookie managers' decisions can cost you big time. Because I do think that's what happened, to a certain extent. Not entirely, of course, but... He should have pulled people well before he did. But then again, the same could be said of the Dodgers in the second Walker Bueller game when, you know, he's got bases loaded and walked somebody with the bases loaded and then, you know, giving up <laughs> grand slams and, you know, I don't know. Well, it seems like through the regular season, all these guys are so quick to give a pitcher the hook. And then you get them in the postseason where it matters more. And you see that they're in trouble on any given night. And instead of giving them a shorter leash, which is what you would think you would do when a game was more important, they actually give them a much longer leash and just like, ah, hey, yeah, that's okay. Stay out there. <laughs> Give up 14, 15, 16 runs. We're good with it. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go to the bullpen two or three innings. Like, what? I don't understand those decision-making processes. Franklin Perez. That is for the Detroit Tigers. I mean, I guess my thing is, if you're going to give them the hook in the regular season right away, then why don't you give them the hook in the same time frame in the postseason where it's more important? That was a refractor, and I almost didn't see it until I went to set it down, and the light hit it just right. That's Zach Granite for the Twins to 499. Behind that, the Kansas City Royals with Evan Steele. Blue parallel, first Bowman to 150. Wrong sleeve. And my little pack there. I think that's just like the greatest name. Evan Steele. It just, it sounds like he should be, sounds like he should be playing football though, doesn't it? It just sounds like a big, you know, running into a steel wall or something. Jake Ring for the Baltimore Orioles. That is a first Bowman. I guess we're not far out from the circus that will be free agency. The Miami Marlins, Monty Harrison. That is a purple shimmer to 655 Marlins. I'm going to be most interested, interested to see if the Dodgers manage to hang on to uh, Manny Machado or not. I see another redemption. Let me... Peel that bad boy off of there. We have two now. Medina once again. First Bowman to 499. A refractor for the Yankees. And then of course there's, you know, we'll all be playing the Where's Bryce Harper game for a while too, I guess. Where's he going to go?
Well, Curtis, you say the Dodgers shouldn't want him because they're going to have Corey Seager back next year. I don't know that I, uh, I mean, I don't know that I totally agree with that. As it, well, first of all, you don't know if Corey Seager's going to come back in the same shape and as good as it when he left. So there's that. And I know Machado is really pretty dead set on wanting to play shortstop. I think he's made that pretty clear. But who's to say you can't just shuffle Corey Seager around a little bit? But I mean, I will grant you that Manny maybe didn't make as big of an impact as I thought thought he would make to the Dodgers until you got to the playoffs. And then he had a couple of a couple of moments there where I think you go, okay, yeah, that <laughs> that trade might be worth it. So I don't know. I don't know that they necessarily want to that they don't want to keep him just because they'll have Corey Seeger coming back. Well, okay, for sure, there's a price difference. But what's the old adage, you get what you pay for kind of thing? So, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think it'll be interesting to see if they make a play for him or not. Well, Curtis, that's a good point, too. You could have Taylor. I would say Taylor, maybe, could end up at shortstop if we come back with Seager, you know, less than, less than perfect, if you will, for lack of a better way to say it. If he comes back, maybe not 100%. Maybe that's the way I'm trying to say it. To 655, it is a purple shimmer for the Yankees. But, you know, the Dodgers have a pretty hefty payroll anyway. So, I don't know that the Dodgers seem to care that much about how much things cost. There's kind of like the Yankees. I mean, they're just like, yeah, we'll pay the tax and go on. Eduardo Diaz to 499 refractor for the Diamondbacks. For the Twins, it's um, the same guy we pulled earlier. Greater all, greater all. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> He says, if you go 30 years without a World Series win, you probably haven't gotten what you paid for. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. That is a valid point, man. I don't know. They're definitely in win-now mode, of course. So, I guess it depends a lot on what happens, where they end up, when things uh, all shake out as to what they feel they want to do with Manny. Shohei Otani, Angels. Bowman Sterling continuity. You know, winning cures a lot of problems. So, uh, and I think winning probably opens up the pocketbooks a little bit too. Or the wallets, I should say. For the Yankees, it is Giancarlo Stanton to 250. That is a purple parallel. And I promise you if I see him strike out one more time I'm just gonna lose my mind I'm so tired of watching Stanton strike out just hit the ball man don't care if it's a home run or not just hit the ball and put it in play for the Oakland A's we have another Arizona Fall League insert this one is Sheldon Noose Nice something like that to 150 you know I will pronounce his name wrong until probably, I don't know, maybe five years after he's been called up. I might have it down by then, <laughs> maybe. And there was a, a base Glaber Torres rookie that went by as well. It is last box mojo time. Yes, indeed. It's time to get it collectively working, guys and gals. See if we can't pull some fire out of our last box of this case. Of course, we do still have the two redemptions flip over, so they could be flaming hot, and we just don't know it yet. Well, hold this pack left in there. See there? That's why it's always good to show the empty box. There was one hidden. It was just hanging out in there trying to play hooky. Just a habit I got into a long time ago. 
always sh uh, showing the empty box after I take something out. I don't even really think about it. I just kind of automatically do it. But every once in a while, you do find something like that. Or your pack might be left behind that you didn't realize or whatever. So, um, Trey Young hit a, <laughs> a shot from, like, almost half court. I, it was a buzzer beater. I think it, didn't it win the game? It wasn't a halftime buzzer beater. I think it was a game-winning buzzer beater. Uh, I just saw the, saw it on, like, a highlight reel. I didn't see it live. But it was pretty impressive, I have to say. I mean... At the first of the year last year, I would have said Trey Young's going to be, like, the best one in the draft. And then as the season wore on, he kind of lost a little bit of his luster. But yet, no matter, the kid can just shoot the lights out. So, Abreu to 655 Yankees Purple Shimmer. So, we'll see how it all plays out. But I think the Hawks, it seems like he's going to fit in over there anyway. Of course, we already know DeAndre Ayton's going to be a, a monstrous uh, load to handle down there in the low post. Charcer Burks for the Cubbies with a refractor to 499 But every year I think that about the Phoenix Suns. Every year I think they've gotten the, the last piece they need to finally take a step forward and be good. And then every year somehow it turns out to not be the last piece they need. I don't know when... When they're going to get sorted out. Ranger Suarez for the Philadelphia Phillies. That is a first Bowman. But of course it's all going to be about, you know, the LeBron and, uh, and Lonzo show. At least for the first few weeks. Everybody's going to want to see the... LeVar and Lonzo uh, playmaking ability for the Lakers. Trying to get back to the Showtime Lakers. Floreal, Bowman Sterling continuity for the Yankees. I think I saw that they did share the court a little bit uh, in a game, maybe today. In preseason. Lorenzo Cain, there's a there's a brewer for you to 499 with a little refractor for Lorenzo Cain. Philadelphia Phillies hit with De Los Santos again. First Bowman, green parallel to 99 Phillies. And the Dodgers hit with Edwin Rios to 250. First Bowman, purple parallel. All right, we have got two redemptions that we're going to flip over. Then we will recap our stack of autographs, and we will recap, uh, do a quick little spin through our numbered cards. And look at that, I stacked an autograph on that last bit of numbered card. So, whoops. And, of course, we will go to the checklist and verify the teams on these. We most likely are going to know the teams, but we will still go to the TOPS website and check that out after we flip them over. Oh, it is Otani. I told you we were due to hit big, and it's gold. Oh, <laughs> the gold refractor parallel for Shohei Otani. Burning down, baby. We are on fire. That is numbered to 50, or it will be numbered to 50 because it's the gold parallel for one Shohei Otani and the Angels, who got the Angels, uh, pretty inexpensively tonight comparatively speaking so yeah that's the hit mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's the fire let's see what the other one is it is micker adolfo and i can never ever ever remember where micker plays for whatever reason can't remember it try to don't don't ever so we're gonna go look it up and then 
and then I will know and you'll know. I, you probably already know for some reason I cannot retain where he plays. And I always want to say it's like the Braves or something that turns out to be incredibly wrong. But let's go look it up. All right, so what are we looking for? I got all excited about the <laughs> hitting the Shohei Otani, and I've forgotten what I'm looking for. Um, Micker Adolfo is who we need, and it is in Bowman Chrome Prospects, so we should find him uh, somewhere in here and find out where he plays. Where are you, buddy? Where are you, Micker Adolfo? Show yourself, please, sir. Did I go past him already? Must have. Where are you, man? All right, let's look at the code. BCPA-MA. Well, I must be in the wrong section altogether because those don't have letters after them. Um, our rookie short print. Oh, so that does answer it. So the Devers was a short print that we saw that I thought probably was. Uh, the Verdugo as well. The other one that I saw must not be then because I don't see him. Oh, yeah, there it is, Nick Williams. Okay, so those all were short prints after all. Um, maybe, is this where I'm going to find Adolfo? Maybe. Come on, man, where are you, dude? There, there he is, White Sox. See, I told you I'm always wrong with what team he is. Can't remember it. Cannot remember that. For whatever reason, he doesn't resonate with me. And, of course, we already passed... Um, uh, Otani on our list up higher. Of course, I think everybody knows that he uh, plays for the Angels, but here he is again, Shohei Otani Angels, so now we know. And you know what, guys? I almost, like, almost opened these myself, like, as a personal group. Because I thought about it, I had them setting out forever, and I thought, yeah, and it had it set out separate now, mind you, thinking this is the ones I, I want to open myself. And then I thought, you know what, that's silly. I don't need to open a whole case of Bowman Chrome for myself. I'm not going to do that. We're just going to, you know, break it like normal. <laughs> oh, see, the sixth sense. La, 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 Twilight Zone. Okay, let's recap. Of course, anytime you see a refractor like this with no color, it will be to 499. When you see it with purple and no shimmer, it's to 250. When we see the blue with no uh, with or without shimmer, it's to 150. The atomic parallel to 150. We have a nice orange shimmer, orange with or without shimmer, to 25 in here. Our gold is to 50, which is what that nice Otani will be. That is blue to 150. Um, here we have a little purple coming out. Purple without shimmer is to 250. Purple with shimmer is to 655. Green with or without shimmer to 99. So that... Uh, that's your, that's your little tutorial for uh, our parallels, except, oh yeah, we hit a red tonight. And guess what? The red is to five. We don't find those too often either now, do we? No, we do not. Okay, so that that is our numbered non-autographed hits. Let's recap our autographs. The really, really, really nice Shohei Otani gold parallel for the Angels. That'll be numbered to 50 when you get it. And then we have the Micker Adolfo uh, autograph for the White Sox. The Dodgers to 250. The Phillies, the A's, that's on a parallel, of course. It's numbered to 150. The Twins... The Orioles, the Orioles to 499, the Diamondbacks, the Red Sox to 150, the Cincinnati Reds, the Yankees, the Orioles to 99, Dodgers to 499, the A's, the nice Miguel Andujar to 499, refractor for the Yankees, the Mets, the Angels, I forgot the Angels had the nice Kevin Maytan too, uh, Zuch or Zeich uh, for the Blue Jays numbered to 150 on the Arizona Fall League insert. The Phillies, the Nationals, the Marlins, the Twins to 250, and the Yankees again. So there you have our 
Bowman Chrome break for tonight. So I will put up spreadsheet information one final time for anyone who might have missed it earlier. We'll give you uh, anticipated shipping dates and things uh, here in a moment. We'll also do a quick little spin through the auctions that are coming up for the days ahead in case anybody wants to stick around and check that out as well. So, of course, uh, anything that we broke tonight that was a free shipping break, which was everything but the Bowman Chrome, projected to go out on or about Thursday a week from today. That's because the free shipping breaks are always projected out roughly a week after the break happens. And sometimes I am able to get it out sooner than that. But plan on that. And, uh, of course, if it goes sooner, you'll know it. eBay sends out those little shipping notices. The paid shipping break tonight, which is Bowman Chrome, uh, projected to go out about Tuesday. If I can get it out to you faster than that, I will. If you're doing any consolation cards from one of our free shipping breaks tonight, uh, I don't think anybody would, would be due any consolation for our paid break. I think every team pulled cards in here otherwise in Bowman Chrome. But in the free shipping break, if you're due consolation cards, uh, typically what happens is I just hang on to them. I do track it for a rolling 90-day period, and I send them out all at once the next time you have a package shipping when you have pulled something. But if you don't want to wait for that, all you need to do is send me a message on eBay and let me know, and I will gladly uh, get that out to you faster. So that's how that works. Then coming up in the days ahead, um, of course, tomorrow night we're going to open a half case of autograph baseball jerseys. We're going to open a full case of impeccable football, another case of Topps Archive Signature Series Retired Players Edition. I think that's our last case of that. I'm not 100% sure that it is, but I think it is. Um, and, of course, Gold Label Baseball, a full case of that. Both Gold Label Baseball and Impeccable Football are new releases for Friday, and we'll open them both Friday night, of course. Saturday, a couple of boxes of 2013 Top Supreme, a couple of boxes of 2010 Plates and Patches, another case of Gold Label, and a half case of Topps Heritage High Number, so we can do a little more Juan Soto hunting in there. On Sunday, we're going to start really early at 9.15 Eastern. We'll open an autographed baseball jersey, an autographed basketball jersey, and a full 16-box master case of Upper Deck Goodwin Champions. On Monday, we'll open a half case of autographed mini football helmets. It'll be the start of a new case. A full five-box case of TriStar Game Day Greats autographed football jerseys. Another case of impeccable football and on Tuesday night, we're going to open a couple boxes of 2007 Upper Deck Premier Football. More Impeccable, more Gold Label, and more Bowman Chrome. And then, of course, by the time we get to Wednesday of next week, we'll be in, into another new release day. And we'll have all kinds of fun stuff going there, too. Curtis, you said you had a feeling I was going to hit Akuna or Otani tonight, but you picked the wrong one. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. You picked the wrong one. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I just kind of, I, last break too, I just said, you know, we're really due to hit in Bowman Chrome. I don't think that, you know, we haven't hit like the big booming hit out of there. And I just felt like we were due a little bit, a little bit the last case. And then I really, well, I mean, I said it at the start of this case. I just really felt like it was time for something to show up. And I felt like, I kept feeling like, man, I really want to flip that one redemption. I really want to flip it and see what it is. <laughs> So I kind of had an inkling that maybe, I don't know, maybe we would hit something. But sometimes I get those feelings and it doesn't work out. <laughs> and sometimes I get them and it does. So I guess my feelings are not always reliable. But, but for what it's worth, that is the case I had originally earmarked and set aside and, and pondered opening myself. And then ultimately decided to break it. So there you go. But we've got more cases down there, and hopefully we'll have more fire waiting for us. But the Angels, definitely uh, the big winner tonight with the Otani redemption on the gold parallel. Really nice hit. So I guess that is it for me tonight. Once again, thanks everyone for joining. I appreciate you spending part of your evening with me. We will be back at it tomorrow night with our new releases and a couple of other breaks too. So I hope that you'll join me then, or if not then, sometime soon. Take care now. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you next time.